person's position and not that of cabinet. We also reached out to the Prime Minister, who is traveling back from SICA meetings in the Dominican Republic. He responded an hour ago saying, quote, there is nothing sinister with these moves. What's happening is that the developed countries are pressuring countries like Belize with an offshore industry to merge both registries as one. We are trying to salvage the offshore industry with this move. The company's registries will be meeting with the media tonight and give a more detailed explanation." End quote. And indeed, there is an ill-timed media session which just started a few minutes ago. According to an 800-word release from BCCAR, which also came out an hour ago, quote, the online business's registry system was built with the vision of making business registration services accessible to all and to create a registry that is built on proper checks and balances, ensuring data security and data privacy. There are built-in mechanisms that allow limited and extended access to information via lawful channels. Therefore, the assertions made in the public should be corrected based on facts within the current laws and regulations." End quote. Even before that press release from BCCAR arrived to suggest fact-checking, our newsroom reached out to the Bar Association of Belize for comment and clarification, since these legal professionals are far more conversant with the law and use the registry on the daily. We were directed to attorney Aldo Reyes, a corporate and commercial law expert who has interacted frequently with the registries. He is also a member of the Bar Association subcommittee, which has been tasked to review the changes in the company's registry. Today, he confirmed our reports that the November 28 changeover does reduce transparency as compared to the prior configuration. However, he qualified that by pointing out that law enforcement agencies such as the Financial Intelligence Unit and the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions will be able to access the information that regular citizens won't. Here's how he explained that. No, essentially, they're no longer, there's no longer a distinction between an IBC, which is known as an offshore company, and a domestic company, which is commonly known, uh, commonly known as a 250 company. Um, there is just now one species of company, which is the Belize Company. And the, the new act, the Belize Companies Act, as you said, it was an amalgamation of the IBC Act and the Companies Act. The amalgamation resulted in, and it is one aspect of, of concern, it resulted in all companies in Belize now enjoying that um, level of confidentiality that offshore companies um, enjoyed um, in that now what used to occur before is when you want to do a, a search of the registry, the local registry, you could get all the details um, for local companies, uh, and that being, you know, the, the name of the company when it was incorporated, its registered office, its um, the identity of its directors, shareholders, and all the documents which have been filed. <clears throat> now that is no longer the case. Uh, when you do a search, you will only get a, a what's called, a, I think it's a short form extract. Um, and it's a very abbreviated form of available information. Notably, what is missing now is are the details of the directors and shareholders. And it is a concern that personally I had um, I had voiced at a very recent um, conference that the FSC had hosted. You are correct that the regular Joe person off of the street, perhaps even a journalist won't be able to access all the details of a company from the company's registry. However, um, we have to bear in mind that the confidentiality that these companies enjoy, it's not absolute. If the FIU or if the DPP, or even if somebody who, who has a gripe against a particular company wishes they can access that information, that information has to be divulged. If the FIU is conduct, for example, if the FIU is conducting a, an investigation because there is, you know, something to be investigated, if there's grounds for an investigation, they can actually send a request to the registered agent of that company to divulge that information, and the registered agent must divulge it. The registered agent, um, by law, they're required to keep all the information of not just who the directors and shareholders are, but who the ultimate beneficial owners are. So, so that confidentiality is not, um, it's not absolute. A 
Attorney Aldo Reyes then discussed other concerns that other members of the Bar Association have with the changes connected to the company's registry. There are legitimate reasons why we want details for, um, uh, for companies, you know, shareholders and directors. To give a very simple example is if I'm representing somebody who's buying shares in a company, of course, we want to do due diligence on the company to ensure that the person who they're buying from really does own the shares, you know. Again, one of my primary concerns as well when I voiced it at the, the conference was that I suppose, you know, I as an attorney, we, we're acting for somebody who wants to sue a company. When we do a search, we want to be able to know not just where the registered office is, but who the directors are so that we can actually serve our claim form. Um, so I was told that information on the company and its registered office would be available, um, but just that you wouldn't have information on the directors and shareholders. And, you know, the sentiment generally that I got, it was just a, um, a desire to, to preserve as much as possible the, the benefit of the IBC that, that existed before. The other primary concern that the Bar Association had, and, and it is one that you know, has the, the Bar Association up in arms, so to speak, is that now there is a um, th there are some fundamental changes in this new act, and and one of them is that now all companies must have a registered agent. All companies except companies whose shareholders and directors are all uh, Belizeans, uh, locals. If you have a company which has a single director who is from another jurisdiction, you must have a registered agent in Belize, and you can only file your documents, any documents for that company through that registered agent. So, so that is one, one concern we had because uh, previously attorneys were able to, um, to file documents on behalf of clients with the registry, but now this new act is requiring all attorneys and law firms to apply for a license from the FSC. And it is not a cheap license. It is quite expensive. And it is something, you know, the cost would have to be passed on to the to the clients. So um, I, I had expressed a concern very early on in the working group about this. And the justification I was given is that they wanted to bring all attorneys under the auspices of the Financial Services Commission so that we have to do due diligence. But I pointed out to them that attorneys are already reporting entities under the, um, the relevant, you know, anti-money laundering laws. So um, I, I, I heard crickets after that, there was no response. So our, um, our conclusion is the rationale for it was merely a, a revenue generating um, intent. One other thing that you know, the, everyone ought to note is that every single company, no matter if you have uh, all locals, um, every single company, IBCs and local companies must actually re-register now. If you don't re-register, your company will be struck off. And you have to re-register through a registered agent, except, again, if your company is all shareholders and directors Belizean. But even so, if, you're all sharehold if all your shareholders and directors are Belizean, then somebody from that company needs to, to have an account with the, with the FSC, and you need to be assigned a login um, password, and you have to familiarize yourself with a new online system. discuss the evolving jurisprudence on beneficial ownership of private companies. He told us that the European Court of Justice recently ruled that governments cannot be compelled to make their companies' registries public. Here are those comments. I recently was sent actually a case um, that, was, that just, was just passed in the European Court of Justice, I think it was about two weeks ago, where Bermuda... Um, took a case to the European Court of Justice and the ECJ um, passed a ruling that registries, um, you cannot force registries to be open to the public because your position, and I should say our position, ought, us ought to be counterbalanced with people's um, fundamental rights to privacy and to protection um, of data. So, you know, it's a, it's a balance of, of rights, really. Um, the, the ECJ found that you can't compel uh, a government to make their registers public. So my initial thoughts, because my concerns were the same as yours, that, you know, why are all these registers now 
closed and we can't access the information, um, there has to be a balance struck. You know, while I understand the need or the desire to, to salvage the confidentiality that, that IBCs used to enjoy, there also has to be struck a balance uh, with the general need, the widespread need to be able to access um, this information, you know. This evening, the National Trade Union Congress added its voice to the chorus of organizations asking for the company's registry to be publicly accessible. It's part of their policy of transparency and anti-corruption. Since today was celebrated as International Anti-Corruption Day, the NTUCB lamented the fact that even after so many years of Belize signing on to the United Nations Convention Against Corruption, UNCAC, the two government administrations have failed to implement it fully. This evening, the NTUCB president spoke to us via Zoom. The, today is, of course, observed as International Anti-Corruption Day uh, with a team that is very, very fitting on top at 20. As, so 20 is very important for us to pay attention to uniting the world against corruption. What we were trying to do here at the National Trade Union Congress is to see how we could unite Belize against corruption, right? So um, if we could go back to 2003, where the United Nations General Assembly adopted the UNCAP Convention by a resolution and the vote was 58 to 4, right? So that was, that, that was a very high vote in favor. Uh, in 2005, um, UNCAP entered into force and in accordance with Article 68.1, the text of the Convention Against Corruption was negotiated during seven sessions of the ad hoc committee, right? Uh, in 2016, November 2016, the Borough Administration signed an instrument of a session submitted to the United Nations General Secretary after the Senate had ratified that motion. Well, everybody got excited and so well, we're going to, finally going to deal with corruption. <clears throat> In 2021, the United Nations passed a resolution to recommit countries of the world the full implementation of UNCAP within the shortest time. To today, December 9, 2022, six long years after signing onto that convention, we have not made any significant move. Maybe the government could show us otherwise, but we have not made any significant move to address corruption, um, and to address corruption. We have a lot more from that interview, which we'll share with you next week. After the break, a heartbreaking story about a six-year-old who wanted to be a ballet dancer. But tonight, that dream is deferred. I'll show you why. And a carpenter like Christ and a prisoner like Paul. One man tells us his story of personal redemption cabinet making. Cash. Okay, why not transfer some? Short on cash? Make up the difference with B-Bucks. Transfer B-Bucks quickly and easily. Enjoy your shopping experience at B-Mart or any other Bennett's entity and get rewarded today. Mom, not very fast, but how you do this now? B-Bucks? B-Bucks, rewarding loyalty. <laughs>
I remember how energetic you were when we were setting up your nursery. Do you remember this one? That's when we went on vacation. I love the pool. I made a big splash. This is a memorable one for me. That was the year you were very thoughtful. I remember that year. I had to save all my money to buy everyone a cake. These past years have brought so much joy to our family. You too can feel the Christmas joy with an Atlantic Bank Easy Credit Loan. Borrow for that special gift, improve your home, or for your holiday travels. Apply today and take advantage of great interest rates, easy and fast approval, discounted bank fees, and convenient repayment terms. Our approved loans from October 3rd to December 16th, 2022 will be entered into our Christmas raffle. For more details, visit atlabank.com. Atlantic Bank, spreading Christmas joy this holiday season. Channel 7's Christmas Bram is here. It's all happening from Sunday, December 11th to Thursday, December 15th. And we want you to come up on all the giveaways. So how do you do that? Come to our office on Albert Street to buy your 25 cent ticket. You can buy as many as you want for more and more chances at a prize. That ticket gets your name in the barrel and gives you a chance to win cash prizes, jewelry, electronic appliances, and much, much more. Then, join us in person on Thursday, December 15th for the Brahms Grand Finale at Blue Martini. Your $10 entrance gets you a golden ticket to win even bigger prizes. So that's five nights of non-stop entertainment, non-stop giveaways, and non-stop fun. Stop, 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 love. Don't paint that wall. I have a better idea. Let us wallpaper it. It is cleaner, easier, and so beautiful and looks very artistic when it is all done. And takes less time to do up a wall than to use that smelly paint. And guess what? It is romantic. What you mean romantic? What is romantic about putting up a wallpaper, honey? Tell me more. Well, you see, we will go to Mikado and see the range of wallpaper. Then we will choose the design together. We will come home and start putting up the wallpaper. And we will be together and be beside each other. We can put wallpaper in all the rooms. And who knows? They even have wallpaper for the baby room too. Well, I like the sound of that. So what are we waiting for? Let's go to Mercado like no. Come in, honey. You can also see our selection of wallpaper on our Facebook page. Like us and follow us on Facebook. Mercado, centrally located in the heart of Belize City at number 37 Albert Street. Belize Water Services Limited has invested significantly to build a 500,000 gallon concrete storage tank and a 6,000 square feet plant building to improve security of supply of water to the San Ignacio and Santa Elena towns and surrounding communities at a cost of approximately 6 million Belize dollars. The construction of the generator building will also help with the consistent water supply to customers during power outages to continue flow of water to you, our valued customers. The company has also invested approximately $1 million in new water connections, a new well at the Makal River, upgrades to Calpech Booster Station, and reconstruction of the river crossing for Benke. These investments in San Inasu and Santa Elena will provide improved water pressure and allowing new customers to have clean, potable water in their home. Belize Water Services, delivering water and more. Channel 7's Christmas Bram is here. It's all happening from Sunday, December 11th to Thursday, December 15th. And we want you to come up on all the giveaways. So how do you do that? Come to our office on Albert Street to buy your 25 cent ticket. You can buy as many as you want for more and more chances at a prize. That ticket gets your name in the barrel and gives you a chance to win cash prizes, jewelry, electronic appliances, and much, much more. Then, join us in person on Thursday, December 15th for the Brahms Grand Finale at Blue Martini. 
your $10 entrance gets you a golden ticket to win even bigger prizes. So that's five nights of non-stop entertainment, non-stop giveaways, and non-stop fun. Next Gen takes you to Qatar. Catch the live action and excitement of FIFA World Cup 2022 from November 20th to December 18th exclusively on Next Gen. Make the switch and sign up today. Packages start as low as $5. Next Gen, the official broadcaster of FIFA World Cup in Belize. is one of the more emotionally difficult ones we've covered this year. It's about six-year-old Brene Maivet, who's had her leg amputated this week. The tragedy unfolded in slow motion after she had a fall in her yard. And one week later, it's ended with losing a limb. But that's not the end for this child who had dreams of being a dancer. I spoke to her mother today about keeping that dream alive. If her life hadn't been changed, Brene would be getting ready to go to this show to see her peers. Because what they're preparing to do is what she aspires to do. But that dream is now further away than it was during the summer when she danced in this class. Brene was one of the students that she was always full of life. Um, when she came in, she was tiny, very tiny, um, but she had the vigor, the energy, um, she did really well, she learned really fast. Um, she, she had a personality that everybody would just look at her because she demanded, you know, that, that energy that she brought. She always danced with full force. Um, so she, like I said, was just a natural. You know, passionate. Passionate is like the best word because she is somebody that loves what she does and if you don't have that then why do it but that passion has been tempered at least for a while and that's because Brene had a terrible accident when she fell into a hole near her yard and got a nasty cut from some broken glass and from there her medical complications have compounded while playing she fell in the drain and a glass slit her um to the back of her calves um, when she got the slit um she she lost a lot of blood uh, we rushed, the neighbors rushed her to the hospital. Um, when we came, um, when I was called from work, I came to the emergency room. She was there. Um, the doctors, um, they tried their best to um, get the blood um, out of, under control because it was, she lost, a, it was bleeding rapidly. She lost a lot of blood. Um, they did the stitches, switch, switch her out. Um, after that, she was, um, we were there in the, emergency room for uh, a couple hours and then um the doctor that was there they um gave her give us some antibiotics and then they told us that um she would be she can go home and delva was told to attend daily clinics at matron roberts so the wound could get a fresh dressing every day but instead of healing as it should Brene's leg started to take a turn for the worse prompting her mom to return to the KHMH. By then, the leg had gotten infected, and that's where things took a dire and irreversible turn. When we came here, um, the, when we came here and we um, waited to see the, the, the nurse, um, by the time we already waited and it was time for her to go in, like the blackness had came way up to this point of her feet. Um, by the time um, we went in and the triages and whatever, um, the call for a surgeon. Uh, when the surgeon came, um, she told me that the feet, the feet looked like it's, um, it's, it's infected. So um, they sent for us to do an x-ray. When we did the x-ray, no pulse was in from here. There was no pulse in the feet. So at that point, uh, when the x-ray came out, the surgeon came and told me that um, apparently our artery had had got um, sliced, it was a vis um, either it was a main vein or an artery that got sliced when she got the cunt. But so she, she was telling me that the child wasn't supposed to go home because it was a deep wound and they didn't check to see if any of her artery or anything got 
slit before they sent us home. So um, by that time, she had told me that there was nothing that she can do for the feet. So, but I told her that I did not want my baby, she's only six years old, to not have a feet. And she said she will still go, since she's a specialist, she will still go and she will cut out, she will open the womb and see if she can repair the um, artery. But she had already told me for the archer to be repaired, it, if it's over seven to eight hours, there's nothing that she can do. So we should have been, she should have been admitting the night so that they can, so they could have um, checked on the foot and then they could have noticed when it started to get blue and then right away they could have um, called the surgeon so that she can repair, this, repair the um, artery. That was the only way that her leg would have been seen. So by the time we came from Sunday to Wednesday, she said it was too much hours. So she said when she went in and she opened the womb, um, all that was coming out was pus. She said everything was, it was, it already had a bad smell. Everything was, everything was, it was, the foot was already gone. And most devastatingly, the little girl who was once a vibrant ballet and even carnival dancer ended up with an amputated leg. So I'm thinking about my child and all the things that she loved to do that she wouldn't, wouldn't be able to do anymore. She's only six years old. And the most heart-wrenching part is that this six-year-old doesn't yet know that she's lost a limb. I don't, I'm just here still thinking of how um, I can relate that to her. I don't know what will be her reaction. Um, the last thing that she said when I was in the um, triage room and the doctor had told me that they will have to cut it, um, she was crying and she said, Mom, Mommy, please don't let them cut my foot. Don't let them cut my foot. And I told the doctor, I said, please, like, like please do everything because I don't want my baby foot get cut. And it is a case with no easy answers, no answers at all, as this mother tries to figure out how to put her six-year-old's world back together. I'm not sure as yet. Um, but I'm still thankful that she is alive. Um, that is all that I, I um, that is the only thing that is giving me hope at this point, that she's actually, um, that, she, that she's alive. Because the doctor said um, if I would have waited until the morning, um, she wouldn't have made it. Sharice Halso, 7 News. If there is anyone in the public who would like to assist Brene's family, they can reach out to her mom at 614-3779. The KHMH claims that the family has yet to make a formal complaint. Still, they say they are aware of the situation and have launched an active investigation. In other news, a Mexican man is claiming that Belize Customs wrongly took possession of his boat near La Union. The man was capturing video as Customs officials were pulling the skiff out of the water, complaining that his vessel was not on the Belize side of the river, but near his farm on Mexico's side of the river. At the time, the skiff was reportedly laden with cattle feed. We tried reaching the Customs Department for their side of the story, but up to news time, they had not responded. Today, the president of the Dominican Republic, Luis Rodolfo Corona, handed over the pro tem presidency of the Central American Integration System, or SICA, to Belize's prime minister, John Brasenio. This was done at the 56th meeting of heads of state and government of SICA, which was held in Santiago de Caballeros in the DR. According to a press release, as the president, Belize will be, quote, steering the regional integration process based on the five priority pillars of SICA integration, which are economic and social integration, institutional strengthening democratic security, climate change, and sustainable development, end quote. Belize will also be focusing on issues high on its national development agenda, such as climate change, food security, migration, as well as deeper engagement with CARICOM and SICA. The Prime Minister started his stint with a flurry of meetings, including a bilateral with Costa Rica and CELAC. Last Tuesday, we told you about the press release from the Guatemalan government in which they expressed frustration that Belize filed an application before the International Court of Justice to include the Zapadilla Keys as part of the final course case to settle the territorial dispute between both countries 
and to establish Belize's borders. That long-standing territorial dispute I remember how energetic you were when we were setting up your nursery. Do you remember this one? That's when we went on vacation. I loved the pool. I made a big splash. This is a memorable one for me. That was the year you were very thoughtful. I remember that year. I had to save all my money to buy everyone a cake. These past years have brought so much joy to our family. You too can feel the Christmas joy with an Atlantic Bank Easy Credit Loan. Borrow for that special gift, improve your home, or for your holiday travels. Apply today and take advantage of great interest rates, easy and fast approval, discounted bank fees, and convenient repayment terms. All approved loans from October 3rd to December 16th, 2022 will be entered into our Christmas raffle. For more details, visit atlabank.com. Atlantic Bank, spreading Christmas joy this holiday season. Channel 7's Christmas Bram is here. It's all happening from Sunday, December 11th to Thursday, December 15th. And we want you to come up on all the giveaways. So how do you do that? Come to our office on Albert Street to buy your 25 cent ticket. You can buy as many as you want for more and more chances at a prize. That ticket gets your name in the barrel and gives you a chance to win cash prizes, jewelry, electronic appliances, and much, much more. Then join us in person on Thursday, December 15th for the Bram Grand Finale at Blue Martini. Your $10 entrance gets you a golden ticket to win even bigger prizes. So that's five nights of non-stop entertainment, non-stop giveaways, and non-stop fun. The human papilloma virus, HPV, is responsible for 90% of cervical cancer cases. 80% of the population may be infected with HPV during their lifetime. HPV screening can prevent cervical cancer. Females 25 to 65 years old get tested for HPV. The HPV test is now available at your nearest health facility. A message from the Ministry of Health and Wellness and the Pan American Health Organization, World Health Organization, with funding and partnership support from United States of America. Good day, Belize. Justin Saunders, Senior Technician at Champion Security here. On behalf of myself and the technicians, I would like to say a thank you to all our valid customers for choosing to trust Champion Security for all your security needs. As we approach the end of this year and preparing for the Christmas season, we urge you to make sure that your security systems are working properly. Feel free to contact us at the Office for Preventative Maintenance Servicing as our well-trained, friendly, and dedicated technicians are here to assist you. To our new customers who are planning or in need of assistance with choosing the best and suitable security systems for your needs, do not hesitate to call our office for we here at Champion Security pride ourselves in the quality work to give you back that peace of mind. Well, I passed this place down Albert Street and I had to wonder which new store the bus. It was so welcoming and organized, friendly and courteous staff. But wait, that is same Delta Store. Delta Store has been revamped to make your shopping experience a whole lot better. But not forget, the best part that Delta Store, everything that is $4.99 or less. You hear right? $4.99 or less. So come on down. Delta Store today and shop in style and comfort while you stretch your dollar. Channel 7's Christmas brand is here. 
It's all happening from Sunday, December 11th to Thursday, December 15th. And we want you to come up on all the giveaways. So how do you do that? Come to our office on Albert Street to buy your 25 cent ticket. You can buy as many as you want for more and more chances at a prize. That ticket gets your name in the barrel and gives you a chance to win cash prizes, jewelry, electronic appliances, and much, much more. Then, join us in person on Thursday, December 15th for the Bram's grand finale at Blue Martini. Your $10 entrance gets you a golden ticket to win even bigger prizes. So that's five nights of non-stop entertainment, non-stop giveaways, and non-stop fun. Belize, Dara Cyber Home Theatre presents a tribute to the late great Otis Redding on Saturday, December 10th, 2022. It's an all-white affair and dance, live music by Mr. Mellow Madness Metro. Live DVD performance of Otis Redding on the big screen. Think about it, baby. Listen, you really, really ought to think about it. Bring out the entire family to the Ex-Servicemen League on 158 Newtown Barracks on Saturday, December 10th, 2022 from 8 p.m. until. Entrance is only $10. Oh, let nothing separate us. Please, you're watching The Nation Station, Channel 7. Okay, this is where they came in, jumping the fence, running, running to the side of the house, and then they went to the front. Pass it right there. I think I know this guy. We will conduct a search in the area.
Champion Security System, where your safety is our business. Coming soon, rent your own security systems with affordable monthly payments. Call us anytime at 223-0560 or at 604-8121 for more information. Please, you're watching The Nation Station, Channel 7. We apologize for that interruption. It was due to a technical difficulty. As we were telling you before the break last Tuesday, we told you about the press release from the Guatemalan government in which they expressed frustration that Belize filed an application before the International Court of Justice to include the Stapadilla Keys as part of the final course case to settle the territorial dispute between both countries and to establish Belize's borders. That long-standing territorial dispute continues unresolved at the national and international level, but at the grassroots level, Belizeans and Guatemalans continue to find common causes and ways to collaborate. This morning, the press was introduced to another binational effort for commerce, which is called the International Network of Women Entrepreneurs. Our newsroom was invited to meet these businesswomen who want to create a climate of empowerment for other female entrepreneurs. Daniel Ortiz has that story. This morning, the Belize chapter of El Network Internacional de Mujeres Empresarias, NIME, which translates to the International Network of Women Entrepreneurs, was formally launched and introduced to the public today at an event at the Golden Bay Hotel in Belize City. Members tell us that on September 23rd, 2022, Belizean businesswomen collaborated with the Chamber of Businesswomen and Entrepreneurs of Guatemala to form the first ever binational women's alliance between Belize and Guatemala. Its main purpose is to empower women to enjoy business success by providing support structures to help them navigate the trade market. But it appears that the idea behind NIME has gained so much momentum in the last few months that the network is being expanded to eight countries within the region. NIME, the international organization, is the first ever binational um, organization association in the country of Belize. We are very, very honored to have the support of businesswomen from the entire region, not only Guatemala in this case for the association. So we have eight countries uh, and in addition Dominican Republic coming together uh, to support women. So what objectives we want to achieve with NIME is to be part of the region, to create more opportunities for growth, empowerment, and definitely for a societal change, change. We want to be actors that contribute to the, to the community and improvement of Belize as well. Actually working on the regional agenda that was created by women for women. Uh, we have attended several forums in Central America and we worked on this agenda that was uh, spearheaded by SEMPROMIPE, the Center for Promotion of MSMEs in Central America, with also the leadership of Romecard, which is the regional um, organization of uh, women in business in, in, in the entire region. So um, in this agenda, we had women from all the countries of the, of the region and we actually have the agenda to share with you today in English. And so you can see all the areas that we will be working on as a, as a group, as a region. Today, uh, we are issuing certificates for those that have reached out voluntarily. All this is voluntary work, and we, we need partnership with, with you, for, with the media, with the government, with the public and um, government organizations. And yes, um, the support has been overwhelming. The, the, the interest has been overwhelming. Just this morning, last night I went to sleep and I had, um, what was it, 30, and this morning I wake up and it's like 40, and I'm not sure what I'm gonna find when I open my email again, uh, but yes, it's open and we want women to feel free to say, I want to be an entrepreneur, I am an entrepreneur, I am a businesswoman, but I want to be part of this group. So it's open for all women that want to be part of a bigger group for community change. Nimes Belize chapter is already receiving endorsements from leaders in Belize, and as a result, 
Government institutions that specialize in trade and financing are in early talks with its leadership on what support can be provided to its membership. It's very important uh, for me as minister um, and on behalf of our administration for us to support initiatives like these. Um, certainly we see where these women have done something uh, extremely innovative and creative and passionately so. Um, they've actually formed an association of all very talented, brilliant, and like I said, passionate women uh, who have a unique skill uh, in whatever uh, craft that they're doing or coming up with. Um, and they don't want to just limit that to uh, Belize. As you know, we have a very small population, and so they're breaking boundaries and going across borders, uh, not just to Guatemala, but looking beyond uh, expanding their, their tentacles across the world, and that's just uh, truly something that I'm impressed with. Um, I met the president a few weeks ago, and I said, you know, as Minister of New Growth, I have to do my part. I have to stand beside them uh, to help them, uh, whether it's establish incentives and policies that could help them uh, to get their products outside, to make sure that they have representation on trade committees, because as you know, whenever um, the trade committees between countries, bilateral trade committees come together, it's always to discuss the big products, but we're not looking at these very unique uh, products that our women are producing. And so getting their products outside of Belize is absolutely essential. And of course, networking uh, with banks like the DFC, uh, we made that connection as well to say this is something that we want um, the DFC to invest Reporting for 7 News, Daniel Ortiz. In the Bible, Jesus Christ was a carpenter who was then prosecuted as a prisoner. For 39-year-old Bruce Harvey, his life went the opposite direction. He was a prisoner for years before turning to God and becoming a full-time carpenter. As a teenager, Harvey wanted to be an architect. But he gave up that dream for a life on the streets and paid dearly for it. But after four stints in prison, he decided to change his life and opened his own business. Now Harvey uses this opportunity to help the other young so that they don't fall into the same prison pit he did. His goal is to eventually have a construction empire to serve the Belizean people and to spread the word of God. Courtney Menzies visited his workshop today and heard his story of redemption and spirituality. Here is her story. The first time I gone to jail, I gone 2009, in October, right? And that now I face some bullet where I may have in my yard. And that fateful day in 2009 was the start of 39-year-old Bruce Harvey's decade-long journey to finding God, himself, and his passion. Fun. When I know, when I watch it, fun. Way back in my life as a young boy, he made show me signs where I never understand, right? Now I understand it, and when I put everything together, I see the puzzle, I see the whole picture. I, I'm a young, I'm a immature, right? My mindset, like, I know me think about the future at time. <laughs> jail me hard, jail me frustrated, jail, you know, those idols, like, Try, try, recreate my mind by read, play chess, check cards, sometimes do the workout, but where, where your mind, where your, your get take away from the world, like my mindset, like, like I'm a kind of dumb, so sometimes not even that I want to do, I just want to lay down. I not there, me they mess with weed, they try to sell weed, that tango to I me there, the school program, right, the school building. You know, and I get bust with the weed. Then time I give up on good opportunity to car. Then time they went and they go to school and then do the TD class and thing I was always the pass high and when they ballet say and then say that time I graduate from high school and I don't take T D. They made a talk about half of me if I could teach this, be like a teacher after that the school that me and good, right? But then you know say kind of my mindset. I end up, you know, they mess with weed, kind of think about, you know, eat. I think about, I want to smoke. I don't reach jail, but the more I do, the more I be that person, the, the more deeper I get in a jail. Then, you're, you're those guys, the same way, then those like say, I don't need a jail, how far down you curl me? And for Harvey, he had a lot more to go before he finally hit rock bottom. After he was released from prison in 2010, 
he had two months of freedom before he was sent back to prison. I do 13 months of jail, two months of road, gone back, gone, four months remanded, right? Come out, do eight months that road and end up back in jail and get five years. Wow. This is how my life starts tumble down because I don't want, I don't want man, I would have said. I was like, where you say, you feel, you always make wrong decision, you feel, you feel, you feel, tell one spell I believe I don't want to feel ya, yeah. mm -hmm. like I can't do nothing good. So like, in a two, when I get 2012, I get my five years, that I'm a fair robbery. Because you say, this the how I mean, I live, I was living in an illusion when I made mean, up on the streets. Because mm -hmm. I was, I was there on the streets, where you say, we say we're there on the streets, hang out. Do craziness, you understand? So I, I was do thing like then. Eh. In me rough man, the decision making, I saw no way I reach a jail, like like you the you like where I tell her a spiritual warfare, right? Then no like I saw beat up myself. Cause I do I say like, so you can't get it right then, brother. While back the jail for my five, I was chop. Now this and be like a next chapter, my, where I feel do, right? I gonna do hard labor. I the pan the chopping gang. So that part, I know those read, but that, that me where I'm if gone through. I come out of jail after my five years. I'm if you come out with thank God, and believe core about God, and I can go in a church, and I want to do this and that. I still never come out with the right mindset. And I said, dream to see it that I end up in a situation and reach back to jail. At this point, Harvey had already missed out on five years of his three kids' lives. And though he was trying to make it up to them, he found himself back behind bars before he could celebrate his youngest daughter's birthday. I always meet people at jail where they don't like for them, because for them, they don't raise them. They don't they talk down for them, for them, for them. No, no, I tell myself this has happened to me. No, I have to make it up to my daughter's fate. Right? Because I don't do know birthday. She, I got in jail and she's small. I think I must say, no, I think she me what? She me like one. One going for two when I got in jail, got to my five years. Before birthday come, her birthday, that July, and nearly the ending of June, I end up back in jail 2018. When I hear my kids there, don't pop. It mashed me up just thinking about it and about my feeling. It hurt me, tear me up that jail. To be honest, man, you see this, this stuff will be real, right? And to be honest, at the end point that I end up in a depression, right? Till I contemplate how I could hang myself. Because I'm a tired of life. Because I am a feel, I believe I am a failure. I cry to God for my bed late the night and beg God no make I get up. Please take away my life. Because it hurt. Because I know I could be a better person, but that I, I just can't make the right decision to make that happen. You know what I does hurt. When I shut my eye for my bed and everything so come back to me and I see how I hurt this one and I hurt that one and I deprive this person and deprive their kids there. It hurt. When I rob, when I rob that young man where I go to jail for he have kids, I don't know if I take away for him, him if go and buy food for his kids to make his kids eat. He work whole week and maybe he might, he might buy ice cream every Friday for his kids then. Now then they wait for this. Now me come as the bad one and take away for him money. When he reach over here and tell for his kids, I know me they look on it so I'm selfish and all and thing hurt me. Because I realized that this is not what God wants. Mm -hmm. You see this, that when I get spiritual awakened, my remorse come. Harvey said it was this little Bible that got him through the most difficult parts of that last year he spent behind bars. Oh God, because of your unfailing love, because of your, your great compassion, bowl out the stains of my sins. Wash me clean from my guilt. Purify me from my sins. For I recognize my rebellion. It haunts me day and night. I stopped put all the puzzle in together now from 2009, from beyond. All the time I get saved, I get shot already. Mm -hmm. Watch my hand. I get chopped. They under my scars from, from, from the streets. Watch this finger can't straighten. Mm -hmm. 
right? They are not the scars. They are not the scars. They are not where the streets bring. You understand? Mm -hmm. I'm if you done dead. I'm if you done dead, but God, God got a true purpose in me. So, so, so he, he no make, he just make I get harm. Mm -hmm. He no make me kill me. That like Job. And in between prison stints, he'd begun following in the footsteps of his uncles, Freddie and Arturo Rodriguez, and his father, Jacinto Rodriguez, all of whom were carpenters. His father had even been the general foreman when the Central Bank of Belize had been built. So when he was in prison for the last time, he entered into an entrepreneurship program. And when he finally came out in 2019, he made the right decision and started following his dream of owning his own cabinet shop. Everything I had gone through and I said, I mean, I do with the grace of God, they come to reality right now. I just sit down under my workshop first. My workshop, that my only day sleep piece where they are child day, that only day I got pictures of it when the only day I made it work. Mm -hmm. Then some early thing happened, we get some early old zinc, some early second hand zinc, and we saw a knock up thing. And in the last eight months, Harvey's business has grown, and his new dream is to build a construction empire. He's using the opportunity he has to help the other young men and even boys in his community so that they don't have to go through what he did and he wants to make sure his prices can be afforded by any Belizean. With all of this, with everything, by my vision, man, that we really open me a construction company, right? I got a lot of homies wrong me. I got, I got homies where they, they lay blocks and they plaster. Then I got my well, uh, he well rater. My well right, right, right to son of my yard. I got my cousin. He built cabinet with we, but he not certified plumber. Then I got two of my homies there, where they not certified electrician. You know, lone young boy. Then I got the, the Lee youths there. I got the Lee youths there. I don't want to grow up like we. I don't want to be like we and make wrong decisions. So far, no, I de, I, I, I invite them in my shop when they see where we belong and like it, they come wrong. I know chase them. We do kitchen cabinet, bathroom cabinet, closet, chest of drawer. We do entertainment center, we do bed, we do upholstery, you know. Anything out of wood, we build. I don't want to come and chance people pack it. I want to come help people. I mean, they do, do hard labor at jail, they chop hard. This is this the way I love. I love this. But while he's come a long way, the journey hasn't ended. And he said he just needs a little more support. I would want help with my table saw, my jointer, my shaper, a band saw, and a planer. They are like about five tools. Then they are the big tools, then, right? Then they are what I really want. I want to do a lot, man. But then, that just one day at a time. See, it'll make you appreciate, well, me, make I appreciate a lot of things in a life. You understand? The stars, just to make I could sit down out there at the night and I look up there and I see the stars and you, 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 you see God wonders now. Back then, I know those look on it this way. You see, when you put the puzzle together, everything fall in a place. Courtney Menzies, 7 News. The Harvey Brothers business also does tile work and refurbishing. And Bruce Harvey explained that also the same type of work in Pomona Village, engaging the youths there as well. He hopes to one day be able to have holiday carpentry programs where he teaches kids the skill while they are out of school. If you would like to contact Harvey, sir, contract Harvey Services, you can contact him at 601-1942. And finally tonight, Albert Street was lit up like a winter wonderland last night when Belize City Mayor Bernard Wagner stepped up to the podium to officially launch the city's Christmas season. His words were filled with inspiration and encouragement to citizens to pay it forward and help those citizens still struggling after Hurricane Lisa. Here's more from the mayor. Christmas tree lighting marks the official start 
board of the Belize City Council Christmas activities. For most of us, right, Christmas is one of the surest opportunities for families to get together, right, to enjoy some laughter, treat each other to gifts. We kindle that unbreakable love that connects us. So I'm here tonight. I am thrilled to see so many families and friends out there with us tonight. Love and blessings are fantastic when we feel and enjoy them, but even more precious when we create and share them with others, especially those in need. What better way to have a truly magical Christmas? As a symbol of gratitude, hope, peace, and goodwill towards men, and all the happiness that Christmas brings, it's time to come down to the big moment for tonight. So I want to invite some kids to join me on stage there. All right, so we'll start at the point of 10, right? When you're ready, come forward, step forward. All right, we'll start with 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Let's go, people! That's seven news tonight. Thanks for watching. I'm Sharice Halso. You can find a full transcript of the news at 7newsbelize.com and see streaming video on our Facebook page. Tune in again on Sunday when our Sun Upon 7 morning show crew will be kicking off our week long Christmas brand filled with lots of prizes, performances, and surprises. And Indra Craig will be back here on Monday night at 6. Good night. <laughs>